In the last video, I showed you a game where Magnus Carlsen crushed Jan Nipomnishi in 19 moves. That was in a Blitz tournament in 2017, part of the Grand Chess Tour. Now, that was in the first half of the tournament. I'm going to show you what happened in the return bout with Colors Reverse. Same tournament, Leuven 2017. This time, Carlsen with the white pieces. Could Nepo strike back in this second game? So Nepo, uh, remaining true to his colours here and playing a Nidorf with black. Um, and, well, just interesting that, you know, in a Blitz game, he's prepared to play, play his, you know, one of his main systems and Carlsen is prepared to take it on. Now, Carlsen plays a, a very steady system, bishop e2. It's, it's hard to refute a move like that. And Nepo goes with the main move, e5. And now, instead of knight b3, the standard move, uh, here's Carlsen's little twist on this opening. He plays the knight back to f3. Well, it doesn't have a, a brilliant reputation. It's not meant to trouble, trouble black greatly. But Carlsen, of course, has a little twist. Let's see what he's going to do. Bishop g5. So he's playing this very positionally. And here, you know, white is, is fighting for control over d5. Now, I mean, this is a very old strategy. And really, it, it shouldn't trouble black very much here. I mean, black basically has two continuations. The, the move that Nepo played, knight d7. And, and bishop e6. So... After bishop e6, the bishop comes to this beautifully chunky square, and, and then knight d7 comes, but basically white gets in, takes, and then castles, and yeah, I mean, it's it's just slightly troublesome that, you know, white gets in uh, knight d5 here, but it, it's just, it's not a big deal for black at all, basically. I mean, this is absolutely playable for black um but you know carlson obviously hoping to you know get one of his positions where he has some slight positional edge but it's nothing to write home about but okay nepo chooses the other move knight d7 which is also very reliable and carlson plays a4 so he's going for the the the, the queen side squeeze basically now, black has to be a little bit careful here. Um, castles, and here is Carlson's idea. So he spins the knight round straight away. So he's looking to play knight c4 and get some pressure here. And Well, uh, if black isn't careful, so for example, plays b6 here. Then knight c4, attacking this pawn, queen c7, knight e3. And this is a bit unpleasant for black. Uh, I mean, you. I, th I think white is getting control here. You know, the, the knights control these squares beautifully. And later on, white wants to play the bishop to c4. And this is well known as being yeah very, very comfortable for white. So, of course, Nepo is aware of that. He wants to, to strike out and he plays knight c5. So that potentially lets out the bishop. He might want to play the knight to e6. He's putting a bit of pressure here, and so on. So Carlson exchanges. And now, with the pressure off e4, he can play the knight into c4. Attacking this pawn. Bishop e7. Um, I'll come back to this position at the end of the game, actually. It's quite quite interesting. Here, here Carlson castled. And Nepo played a standard move, bishop e6. He could play knight takes pawn. And this is typical of these kind of liberating moves that are at black's disposal. Just leads to an exchange of pieces. Um, I think you could say white is maybe very slightly better in this position. You know, there is some control over these light squares here, nice diagonal, but I can't believe that black is significantly worse in that position. I'm sure black is, 
should be all right. But, you know, you need to play accurately. I think that's a, you know, particularly in the Blitz game, trying to find those accurate moves to level the position is not easy. So I can understand why Nepo declined to play that. You know, in a classical game, I can imagine a play doing that and then investing, you know, 10 or 15 minutes to find exactly the right continuation to equalise. But not possible in a Blitz game. You just, you don't want to find yourself in a position where you're just under pressure and you have to invest time. You That's that's a nightmare. Okay, so bishop e6, a5. So Carlsen starting to get a bit of a clamp on the queen side. But still, still playable for black. Rook comes to c6. And now, well, again, this is very, I think, typical of Carlsen's style. We saw in that first blitz game, very different kind of position, um, but Carson sees the initiative with Black. You know, he doesn't like to hang around. He doesn't play half moves. He he has a plan and he goes for it full throttle. And here, Carson did the same. B4. So that just forces the knight back and then the knight comes into D5. Now, uh, looks quite impressive, but actually... Black is still okay in this position. You know, these bishops are good. I love that bishop on g5, striking down the diagonal. Typical Nidorf position. You also see such positions in, in the, the uh, Sveshnikov and the Kalashnikov as well. Um, Black actually has decent counterplay here. And before, you know, he gets caught on the c-file somehow... Um, Carlsen moves the knight away, but that does allow bishop takes knight. So obviously queen takes, got to be careful there because this pawn is on. Uh, so pawn takes, so position has changed. Now white has this queenside pawn majority, four against three. So Carlsen is looking to, to push forward with c5. But black has this pawn majority on the king side, you know, this extra pawn in the middle, four against three here, and he plays e4. So, again, a very typical kind of position where, you know, both sides are kind of pushing like that with their pawn majorities. And, I mean, I like these kind of positions with black because if you can break here, you can break the pawn front uh, in front of White's king, and you know later on try to get some attack. But again, typically for Carlson, you know he just doesn't mess around. You know he's he's not um, delaying in any way. You know he doesn't think, oh well, I better pre prevent this. He doesn't play rook a three or something like that. He just blasts through with c five. It's so typical of his style. It looks very impressive, but actually. Black can still defend here. It, it, it's still okay for Black. I mean, for example, even a move like just like Knight F6, holding the position for a moment, bringing that Knight over, putting a bit of pressure here, is not bad. Nepo takes on C5. D6, Carlson drives on, so he's prepared to give up material. Um, and it's a really complicated position now. Rook c8. Uh, probably he should play rook c6 here. But instead he played rook c8, and I suspect in a blitz game he'd underestimated this move. Bishop g4. Oof, that is a tough one to meet. Suddenly, black is pinned very nastily, and, and white you know, wants to play knight, maybe knight b6, maybe just taking on c5, uh, perhaps with the pawn. Um, that is looking very nasty indeed and of course just bishop takes knight and knight b6 or knight c5 i mean all kinds of things for black to consider here it's really tough um so nepo just takes on b4 but now carlson wins the exchange queen c6 please you should probably go to e6 but anyway rook b1 and this is a really difficult position for black and I, I pointed out lots of um, 
weak points there in black's position. If you look at the material balance, you'll see that it's bishop and two pawns against a rook. So nominally, still actually black has parity. In reality, this is a really tough position for black. Look at these pawns. They are all potentially vulnerable. Look at that back rank. It'd be much nicer for black if that pawn were on h6, for example, protecting the bishop and giving the king a flight square on h7. So there are just so many loose elements in the position that black has, not to mention the fact that white has this wonderful d-pawn, uh, which needs taken care of. Uh, so, well, you know, for example, if rook d8 takes here and here, that pawn is under attack, that pawn can be attacked very easily just by doubling rooks. That is not an easy position to defend at all. e3 by Nepo. So he just makes a decision just to try to stir things up a little bit. I think that's just a kind of blitz move. You know, he, he senses that maybe he can get a hit against White's king later on. But actually, watch what happens. The F file has opened up and things go from bad to worse. F7 attacked. Defends. Queen takes pawn. Now it's pretty nasty. Queen takes pawn. Well, I mean, the end game uh, doesn't look bad for White here. But Carlson wants to just pile on the pressure and keeps the queens on. And why not? Attacking this pawn. Also looking at a6, bishop takes pawn check, king in the corner. Nepo defends the pawn on f7, rook d1 hits the queen. Now there are, there are lots of loose pieces here, or potentially loose pieces, loose points pieces, um, and Nepo makes an outright blunder here. He could hang on with queen e6, but this is highly unpleasant. I, I mean, the end game should be winning for white after this, and uh, the rook coming to d6. Too many weak points. And if queen g6, queen e5 hits the bishop, threatens rook d6, black must be lost there. But in the game, watch what happens. So the rook attacks the queen, queen h6, and now, boom, queen takes pawn. End of game, it's mating two, rook takes. There you go, for the record, rook takes here and checkmate. So two very convincing blitz victories for Carlson. And I repeat, I think you know we can see his style very well there. He loves the initiative. He doesn't mess around. And even in his classical games, we see that as well. You know, he finds a strategy, he goes for it very directly. Um, I mentioned way back in this position, here is where Carlson castled. Funnily enough, uh, just a few weeks later, uh, Nepo had exactly this position again. He was prepared to play it again with black. And here his opponent uh, was Maxime Vachier-Lograve playing with white. And now instead of castles, Maxime played a5 and actually won a really nice game against Nepo. So, you know, I think this shows a slightly stubborn streak to Nepo. Um, this position looks actually looks worse than the position he had against Carlsen. Um, you know, it looks like Maxime has already established a very nice positional advantage. This is, this is what happens when the Nidorf goes wrong. Uh, this is not a lot of fun for black to play. Um, it's it's the classic good knight against bad bishop position. And Nepo struggled, but never actually managed to shake off Maxime's grip on that position. And the Frenchman won a really beautiful game. And that was a classical game. So yeah, we see a very stubborn streak to Nepo, uh, persisting with... Maybe slightly dubious position sometimes. Interesting. Somehow, 
I can't imagine we'll see that in the World Championship match. But anyway, I just thought I'd note it. Uh, by the way, in that Blitz tournament, sorry, coming back to uh, Leuven 2017, this Blitz tournament as part of the Grand Chess Tour, Carlson was in, well, imperious form. He won with 14 and a half out of 18. Nepo was way back with 9 out of 18. More coming your way soon. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget, like, comment, share and subscribe. And do consider supporting us via patreon.com, powerplaychess.com. Um, and also PayPal. Thanks for watching.